James here today. I'm going to be talking to you about North Men by John Haywood. But before I do, I just have to point out that we're now actually at the time of the year where basically the sun is hibernating forever uh, until March, basically, I guess. So we're basically at the time of the year where either I get my shit together and like organize and film videos at the weekend when it's daylight out or you just get videos like this where the lighting's shit and I can't do anything about that and uh, that's just the world we live in. So now that I've done uh, the classic booktuber apology uh, for something that really is out of my control and affects nothing, uh, let's talk about uh, this book, North Men by John Haywood. Now, you may think that that moment at the start where I <laughs> distracted myself from talking about the book um, was was inappropriate uh, for a book review, but it really does encompass sort of how I felt about this book. Um, it took me so long to read this. It took me almost all of August to read this book. Um, so in August, I read like <laughs> I read *The Colorless Sukuruzaki* and uh, *No Country for Old Men*. Uh, literally in like the first three days of the month and then after that I tried to read a Terry Brooks book which I just I couldn't do because I've discovered that I really don't like Terry Brooks uh, as an author I think he's a bit shit and I probably am gonna get rid of like the Shannara trilogy uh, I don't think I'll ever finish it uh, sorry Terry I read the first one whatever um, but uh, then I got to Northmen uh, on like the 6th of August and it took me to like the 26th of August to finally read it. And when I say read it, I mean I got to about uh, page 300 and then I was like, fuck this. And I just like skim read the last 50 pages. Um, now, it may then surprise you to note that the book isn't actually horrible. Um, it just isn't really my thing. So, North Men, let's say what it is, first of all. Fucking hell, this is unorganised. So, North Men uh, by John Haywood is a non-fiction history book. It's just a his historical uh, book about the Vikings. Uh, the Vikings Saga, 793 to 1241. Um, basically, it charts the uh, rise and eventual fall of Viking culture and like Scandinavian migration domination, whatever, you know, throughout Europe and other bits of the world uh, in between these years. Uh, it picks 793 as a starting point because that's when the Lindisfarne raid was, uh, which was like, I mean, if you've seen the show Vikings, that's like where that show starts as well. Um, I don't think that he picked that because of the show Vikings. Just, just saying. Uh, it's just like one of the earliest examples of a Viking raid, whatever. Um, so the way the book is set out really was its undoing in my point of view because the way that it's done, uh, like the way that the title is, it suggests that it's going to be like a timeline narrative. Um, of how they progressed from one year, you know, one set of years to the next set of years. Um, that's not entirely the case. It is kind of, uh, but not, not entirely. And that was a big problem because what it did um, is, in order to cover the different geographical locations, he split the book up by geography. So, like, one chapter would cover England, the next chapter would cover Francia, which is, like, Germany, France, that kind of area. Um, then it would be like the Mediterranean, the Americas, you know, Turkey, like Jerusalem. I think there's a chapter, and then and then like then there's another chapter about England later. I don't know, but what the problem is with that 
is that it takes you back to the beginning of the timeline for each area. So you get like England, right? Starts at 793, Lindisfarne, goes up to about just before uh, the Norman Conquest, so just before 1066. Then it cuts off to Francia, and like it's like Francia 800 to 1011 or something. And it's like, like we just read all of this because the problem is a lot of the um it suffers from a lot of repetition because a lot of what you've read um pops up again you're like okay and then the vikings invaded and like they harassed the farms and then they got into politics and then they sort of assimilated and then it's that same kind of narrative everywhere like the narratives aren't different enough in the different geographies to really make it worth doing i think it would have benefited more from a structural point of view just to have the straightforward timeline um because it doesn't help as well that uh, as is the case with a lot of nobility in the old days they would name their kids after themselves so in the england chapter there's like seven ethelstans um that have some minor importance um and then in the Francia chapters, it kind of talks about a few Ethel stands, and you know, I don't know which fucking Ethel stand this is, because is it uh, like is it the first Ethel stand or is it the seventh one? I can't remember which fucking time period we're in now. Um, so that was complicated, and it really that was the main thing that muddled me up, and it kind of put me off reading the book because I was like, I don't want to read again about how vikings landed their boats and oh harassment but that said the individual chapters once you sort of got into them were really interesting like the francia chapter in particular was interesting because it talked about how there was like uh charlemagne was like the big king uh the french king you've probably heard the name even if you don't know really who he was um so charlemagne dies the land is split up between like his five or so apparent heirs because that's the way the inheritance worked and it was sort of like it was more interesting really learning about the different ways that these countries developed more so than the vikings themselves there were some really there were some funny anecdotes there were some kind of interesting moments but overall the style really hindered it because i was like it just threw me out of what i was reading and john haywood's like prose uh, it started okay, uh, and I thought it was like, it's pretty accessible. Like I'm kind of like a history rube, right? So if you if you were someone like uh, Triumphal Reads, um, you know, he's gonna have a much easier time with the with the style, I'm sure. But for me, it was like really dry um, compared to because obviously I read most obviously almost entirely fiction. Um, so it's kind of just dry to me. You didn't really get a sense of these different characters, and it was just. A lot of names, a lot of repeated names and events happening. Um, so I didn't really enjoy it, but the information itself was really interesting. I think I would, I really enjoyed a lot of the material in there. I think it does offer an insightful and good overview generally of the whole Viking picture. Because especially with Vikings, they're like one of those mythical warrior races, right? Um... You know, they're kind of like samurai where there's so much mysticism uh, and mythology built up around them. It's kind of hard to know the real uh, facts and separate the facts from what sort of fantasy. Uh, you know, the horned helmet being like the chief example. Like, this is not, it was like a historical mistake that kind of Hollywood picked up. But, you know, um, so it was interesting to get to some more interesting facts about Vikings. It's a really interesting period of history. Um, one that I think we don't learn much about, uh, especially it, it's weird because like in England, especially, um, you would think that Vikings were a huge part of our heritage. Um, we don't learn much about them. The way that uh, English is like, this is an aside, the review's basically over, so if you don't care about this, just subscribe and go away. Um, but the way the English school system works with history uh, you kind of learn a bit about the Romans. Um, then you learn, like, none of the Viking stuff. Then it's the Norman Conquest, so you get William the Conqueror, but you don't learn sort of anything about him 
after the Battle of Hastings. So, like, he comes in, he wins the Battle of Hastings, and then suddenly it's the Tudors. Uh, you don't learn, by the way, about the War of the Roses and really how the Tudors came to be. You just learn about Henry VIII and and a bit of Elizabeth. And then it's straight on to World War I, because no history happened uh, in between all of those years. It literally went, the Romans, William the Conqueror, Henry VIII, World War I, World War II, and then that's sort of it. That's where history ends. There's nothing's happened uh, in British history since World War II. That is something I learned in school, and now you know it too. So this was uh, me doing a video <laughs> uh, on a Monday evening. Oh, it's not even fucking Monday, is it? I'm a day late. It's Tuesday. I'm sorry. Uh, but join me on Thursday. I might even... I uh, probably won't, you know, because I, I got up early this morning to film this, and I realised that it's now that stage where it's like... It's just bleak in the morning as well, so it's just dark all the time. So I'm going to do you another video on Thursday, probably with the bad lighting, um, to talk about Ada Palmer's To Like the Lightning, which I'm very excited to talk to you about because I've been really enjoying that book. Um, so yes, I'll do that on Thursday. And on Friday, you'll get the top something. I think we're going to do another top ten. Uh, top 10 sci-fi in media that isn't books. Yeah, sounds all right, doesn't it? Let's do that. Top 5 sci-fi. Sci we might do top 10 because there's a, there's a lot, isn't there? So I'm waffling now, so thanks for watching. I'll see you next time and uh, see you later. Bye.